everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Earlier this morning, Ubiquity released Unify Network Application 8.2.9. This update comes with a lot of great new features and improvements. Now let's jump right into the update. The first new improvement is the inspection page. Here it's going to show us blocked and suspicious traffic on a single screen. You'd see that I have quite a few ad blocks as well as a traffic block. I did create my own traffic rule and you can see that here if we check it off. And my iPhone, my iPhone 14 is blocked from going out to Facebook. And this is what I created under the security section. We could also just filter out for firewall rules. And if I click on that, you're gonna see a couple that were blocked from my inner VLAN routing rule that I've created. Right now, I don't have any suspicious activity or I don't have anything blocked from our IDS or our IPS. But we could tell from the screenshots on the Ubiquity page that this is a lot nicer of a view to just be able to check from one single pane of glass and I really like that improvement. Next up is the ability to block traffic using access lists between clients or MAC addresses on the same network. We can also block clients on different networks using IPv4 access lists and IPv6 access lists are gonna be coming in a future firmware release. But right now I'm gonna show you how to do one using the MAC address on the same network. To get to the access list, we need to go over to security and then we could see our ACL rules. Here we have two different types. We have MAC address or we have IPv4. And I already have a name up here. We're gonna block my computer from getting to my Synology NAS. And then we have our different action. We could either block or we could allow the traffic. Under switch, I'm currently using all my switches, but you need to make sure that they're layer three switches. And now if we look at this error message or the eye icon, it says ACL rules are not applied to and do not isolate traffic between clients connected to the below unified devices. And these are my access points in layer two switches. Next, we need to put in the network. So the one I'm using is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. And then we have our source and our destination. We could do it a couple different ways. Under our source, we could do it by the device. We could pick any, or we could input the MAC address. I'm gonna select the device. Under the device, my computer is called Mac Telecom. So we'll click on that and then press save. And our destination is gonna be my NAS. So we'll select the device again. And I believe it's called Synology and there it is. And we'll press save. Before we do the block with the access list, let's make sure that we could get to my NAS. So I'll ping 192.168.10.220. Dash T, and you can see that we're able to hit it. Once I apply this rule, we'll end up seeing it go offline in a couple seconds here. And just like that, we created an access list to block my computer from getting to my NAS. This next update has been long awaited and that's the ability to create different types of DNS records. We can now create A records, quad A, MX, text records, and service records. We can also forward queries for a specific domain to a different DNS server. I'm just gonna create one A record that points to my Synology NAS. To create a DNS entry, we need to go over to routing, then DNS and select the type. CNAME, NX domain, and PTR records will be added in the future as well, but we're just gonna use a host A record. So I'm gonna create one saying nas.mactelecomnetworks.com. The IP address will be 192.168.10.220, and then we're gonna add that in. Now, if I bring up a command prompt and I ping nas.mactelecomnetworks.com, it should resolve 192.168.10.220, and it currently is, but it's not going through. And why that is, is because of our access list. So we'll go back to our security, we'll go to ACL, I'll go to manage, and then I'm gonna just remove this because I need to get to my Synology NAS. I'll bring the command line back up again, and we should see that hitting that NAS in just a second. And there you go, we're able to hit our Synology NAS after deleting that access list rule. I think this update is gonna make a ton of people very, very happy. Another improvement is MLO or multi-link operation, which works with our Wi-Fi 7 capable devices or our access points. I will be doing a full in-depth video about this eventually, but one of the benefits to using MLO is that it aggregates multiple channels on different frequency bands at the same time. This will give us speed increases and less interference. I put a link in the description below from everything RF that goes more into detail about multi-link operations if you wanna check that out. Those were the major changes within this release and you could see one more that says BGP. When I go back to my network controller and I click on my settings and then we go over to our routing, I don't see BGP there yet. I only see OSPF 
it's probably going to be pushed out in another OS release, I would believe. Now we're just going to take a look at a couple minor changes, which I think are pretty great. If we go over to our networks and then we click on new virtual network, I'm just going to call this test. If we uncheck auto scale and say we put in a public IP here, 100.1.1.1, it's going to come up with a note. This specified subnet is public and can be used by locations on the internet. Use a private subnet in a range listed below to avoid reachability issues. The amount of times that I've seen people put in public IP addresses in their networks is unbelievable and I'm glad they added this tooltip. Another thing that's been added is on our topology page, we can now see our spanning tree priority. You could see that we have that right here above my aggregation switch as well as under my USW Pro Max switch. At the bottom, there is an alert. Multiple switches have the same STP priority. Reassign priorities to avoid network loops, which I will do. I did just rebuild this network before doing this video. Something else is new is under our ports. And if we go over to our VLANs, we could now see the native VLAN assignment right at the top, which they just added in. Another thing is under our radios. Now under our radios, we have different Wi-Fi broadcasts, which will pick up our different access points, which those SSIDs are broadcasting on. So I'll click the drop down menu, we'll select Dolores, and you can see both APs have the Dolores SSID. But if we select my cameras, it's gonna drop down just to my U6 Enterprise in wall, because that's the only AP the cameras is broadcasting on. And that's gonna be it for this update video on Unify Network Application 8.2.93, and boy, were there a lot of changes. ACL rules, DNS records, MLO, and the inspection page. If you'd like to read through the change log, I've linked it down in the description below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.